The countdown is officially on. We are 50 days away from the NFL season kicking off. It seemed like it's taken so long to get here. I can't believe it's still 50 days away, but we will be in action back in training camp next week. But as you get ready for training camp, we bring in a special guest who we loved interviewing when he was a member of the Saints. And also we like to keep up with him as he's over in Florida. So if that's any hint as to who we have on the show, I think you guys will enjoy it. Andrew Dow days away from the start of the NFL <laughs> season. That's big. It's, it's right. coming quick. Yeah. Training, training camps right here. We're going to have all your coverage on New Orleans stop football. So make sure you are signed up to the site. Use the code camp 23, 20% off your first payment. And as always, we are presented by PJ's coffee and coming to you from the better call Botto podcast studio. And if you need to buy a car, go check out my guy, Matt Bowers, he has dealerships all over the Gulf South region. He is the best car dealer that you can deal with. His team will take care of you. I vouch for him. I bought my vehicle from him. Always, always top notch there. And what is also top notch is PJ's Coffee. They got the best coffee, as we said. Locations all over the city. So get there and start your day with them and maybe play it, uh, our podcast alongside while you're sipping your coffee. And if you need legal help with any of the following car wrecks, offshore injuries, 18 wheeler collisions, Maritime and Jones Act, hurricane and storm claims, you better call Botto at 504 323 7777 or 985 303 7777 for your free consultation and case review. And check out Hard Hide Punch Tool Strawberry Whiskey. That is an 86 proof blend of aged wheat bourbon, American light whiskey, and fresh punch to tool strawberries blended in New Orleans. It is not for the thin skin. Look for it in your favorite stores, bars, and restaurants. And get to an ideal market, home of the freshest produce in the city. They do a great job in the community. They received the Peter J. Larkin Award from the National Grocers Association for Outstanding Community Support. They always bring the best quality food products at the best prices. They are the home of the largest variety of Hispanic and international foods you will find in the state. A hot deli that surpasses many restaurants in the flavor of their authentic Hispanic dishes and also the best place to cash checks, wire money, pay bills. They have a complete customer service department like no other. And check out Firehouse Subs, Veteran Boulevard location. Great people doing great things for the community. All right, let's get into the show. The moment is finally here, presented by New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. The rookies have reported, and better yet, Isaiah Foskey has signed, so all of the Saints draft picks are now under contract. How good is it that they can just open it up and that's already done? Forward momentum, yeah. yeah. Like, and as you said, it's just it's nothing that can set anything back. I don't, I don't think it was probably gonna, but you never know. Right. And sometimes you get in these like lock situations and nobody wants to budge. Somebody budge. We're gonna find out who when the contract. Uh, gets filed and we get our hands on it. But yeah, I, I think it's a good thing. I think he's important to the team's success. Making sure he's on the field, I, I think is paramount to everything. So just settle it, smooth it out, get going to camp. I was so excited yesterday. They sent out the email and it was just like <laughs> training camps are opening this week. Like it's not like quite here because you don't really get to open that package until next week. We're out of practice, but like you can see all the boxes under the tree right now. And you know, it's an exciting time of year. Yeah. The moment for me will be, seeing all 90 of them on mm -hmm. the field practicing. I, I don't know if we get that moment on the very first day of practice, the second day of practice, the third day of practice, but uh, you know, the, the signed contracts, that's one thing. The off the injury list is the big one for me. <laughs> Huge. And there's three draft picks that were a part of some roster moves that happened this week on the non-football injury list, wide receiver Shaquan Davis, running back Kendra Miller, wide receiver A.T. Perry were all added to that list. For me, that's the biggest concern because we didn't really even get to see Kendra Miller yeah. too much. And that's the one guy we've been talking about. Hey, we want to see him on the field. What does it mean to be on the non-football injury well, list? Well, yeah, I will let Nick talk about the reporting he did on the status of their injuries. But concern doesn't automatically – you're going to see this. You're going to see two or three veterans. Michael Thomas is probably going to start on this list. Even if he practices on the first day Wednesday, he will report to camp on Tuesday and probably start on the list. It's it's procedural. You if you don't begin on a list, you can never be put on a list or, or you're going on a reserve list. Um, when you pass your physical and you're going to practice on the first day, that's when you get off a list like that. So for Kendra Miller, um, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he doesn't miss a practice. But if he hasn't you know, completely uh, passed his physical, same with all these guys, uh, they always cover themselves. He could almost like suffer a setback, re-injury, different injury related to the injury. 
you got to start on those lists, though. Yeah, and the reason for that is, is if you start on the list, you can just stay on the list. If you yeah. don't start on a list, then come cut down day. Like, say you, you're Kendrick Miller, you go out there, you, they take him off the list, he does his conditioning test, something happens with his knee, and he never actually practices. They have to carry him onto the initial 53-man roster and then make a move. So that means you're exposing somebody else to waiver. So it's just safer. Okay, this guy has an injury. Put him on the list. Let's see what happens. In the case of both these guys, Kendrick Miller, A.T. Perry, I'm hearing that neither one's a big deal. I was actually told Kendrick Miller's is not a medical issue, so that That's sounds great. positive. It could be a conditioning thing. It could just be, you know, waiting to see how things play out. A.T. Perry has a minor, small injury, not something that anybody's concerned about at this time. So I think both those situations will trend positively mm -hmm. in, in due time. But obviously, would not would rather not have guys on yeah. list than on list. But I don't think either one of these ones raise the level of concern. And, right and now. don't, yeah, and it's a good reminder not to panic when this yeah. list comes out next Tuesday with veterans on it, because it will. Oh, uh, they're um, going to panic. They will panic. Ah, Mike again, here we go again. Ah. Th there will be concern, and we will talk on our Wednesday episode next week if guys are not practicing on the first day of practice. They're on a list on Tuesday. Minor concern, if they aren't practicing on Wednesday, a bigger concern. Look, the biggest question for me is Kendra Miller. I actually went back and looked into this injury because we all were under the assumption that it was a simple MCL injury. And I went back and looked and articles that people were covering him out of TCU were saying that he was progressing faster than normal. That was ahead of the draft that they were reporting that. So for me, it's, is he out of shape? Did something get re-aggravated? Is why why is there an abundance of caution with the MCL? That answer might or that question might never get answered in training camp. But it is something that I think why is it taking so long? Given number one, he frame wise he looked great out there even when he was working off to the sides. But side but an MCL really should not take this long. I think that the way it's playing out is the way that Kendrick wants it to play out. Yeah. That's fair. Now on the physically unable to perform list, also known as the pup list. Nick Saldaveri is on that list as well as defensive back Anthony Johnson. For Nick Saldaveri, we know that he had a little bit of a calf injury in OTAs. It seems like maybe this is just something carrying well, that's, over. Well, the difference between the two lists is non-football injury. Um, in Kendry Miller's case, it means it, it happened before he joined the Saints. It was a football-related injury, but it was not didn't occur while he was with the Saints. Um, same with the other guys. I guess A.T. Perry's happened mm -hmm. during the time off. Um Saldaveri and Anthony Johnson got hurt during Saints practice. So they go on the pup list. It's just a different name for a similar, similar list. Yeah. We when we saw Anthony Johnson, I believe he had a leg brace on at one point. So I think his situation might be yeah. possibly a little bit more serious. I, I don't think Nick's is a huge deal. It, it we saw him kind of moving around a little bit mm -hmm. in these camps. So you know, I, I think it's important he gets out there though. He's someone that yeah. they're looking yeah. at to compete for some of those spots. He's possibly going to be someone that that you know, knocks a, a mainstay off the offensive line, I think it's important that he gets out there. So it, the sooner that happens, the more likely that result can happen. Yeah, I think just it was maybe a knee jerk out of all the injuries the Saints have had over the last few years. Offensive line screams, yeah. screams those concerns. Well, there were some practices where with Trevor Penning and Cesar Ruiz and out and Anders Pete hadn't shown up yet yeah. and Ryan Ramchek hadn't shown up yet, like – there was there was like a, where is the offensive line when are they when are they, when are we going to see the offensive line i hope that comes next yeah. week speaking of the offensive line we have a very special guest coming up later who i i said former fan favorite but i think it's safe to say this former saints left tackle is still a current saints fan favorite we will get to that later on in the show but speaking of the offensive line this gets right into our question of the day presented by martin wine and spirits Home to a wide selection of hand-picked barrel select bourbon, whiskeys, and more. I know I like to pick up a bottle of wine every once in a while from there, especially after work. But let's get to the question of the day. Given Saints offensive line injury history, how many O-line do you see making the roster? And related, do you think the Saints keep a true backup center in Billy Price? Speaking of wide selections, there are a lot of <laughs> offensive line to yeah. choose from. No, look, I, I think they have some some interesting. Um, I think they have some interesting options here because there's a handful of guys, and I, as I was saying, I think Nick Saldaveri is one of them that have a lot of position flexibility. And last year they kept nine guys going into the season. That number could be lower this year if they feel like they have a little bit of flex there. Maybe it's eight, maybe it is nine. You can never have enough of these guys. The way that the the roster elevations work too, like it's always interesting. Like I don't think these numbers mean the same thing they did pre-COVID because there's just ways to manipulate it. So like if you think you can't get a guy through somewhere else, 
you might put like an older aging veteran player on your practice squad and elevate them and, and kind of manipulate things that way. But I think, I think nine's a good number. It's a solid number. And I think, you know, the, the, you want me to set the depth chart, like just going through the first handful of guys, no particular order. Cesar Ruiz, Trevor Penning, Ryan Ramchek, Eric McCoy, Andrews Pete, James Hurst, Nick Saldaveri, Calvin Throckmorton, and Storm Norton, I think are the guys that I have at the top of that list right now. Um, but I think Throckmorton something that's going to kind of, that that's probably most, if you want to look at where Nick Saldaveri is maybe raising the water level and somebody's like trying to stay above that water level, I think those two guys are the ones that are kind of most impacted by that draft pick. Yeah, nine is a really good number. So the nine last year included Trevor Penning, who was immediately put on injured reserve, bringing it down to eight. But then they picked up an offensive lineman off waivers from the Bills who never passed his physical. And then they went out and they added Wyatt Davis uh, Saturday before the first game. So they... They kept working their way back to nine. Who was the guy from the Bills? Do we know? We don't know. All right. I, I, know I, I looked it up earlier and I forgot his name already. But, you know, that's what happens when you, yep. you never show up <laughs> or you never pass your physical. Um, but but uh, but then Wyatt Davis was inactive on game days. But to your point, um, the new NFL rules starting a couple of years ago, you can have 48 active players as long as eight of them are an offensive lineman. So it'll be at least eight. Um, and I think it'll be, I think it could be nine or 10 because of the injury question marks we have across the board. Mm -hmm. We have injury question marks with almost every starter. We have an injury question mark with backup Nick Saldaveri. Um, they're they're going to have to be in CYA mode with it, with their offensive line. And I have a total of 13 players that, that I would consider putting on, on, on the roster. You, you listed them all. Uh, they paid a lot of money to, to Mark Evans, uh, the, the rookie that we're going to talk to his uh, former Arkansas Pine Bluff uh, fellow uh, product. But yeah, Lewis kid made the roster mm -hmm. last year. And, and right now I think we kind of have him on the outside looking out or on the outside looking in Landon, Landon Young, Young, Calvin Throckmorton, um, guys who've been on the roster uh, could be pushed out if they don't keep if they don't keep more than nine. Yeah, and Mike just gave the final hint. Teron Armstead joins us right after the break. Now at New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company, get our 10.99 shrimp rumalog combos with zesty shrimp rumalog and fried shrimp or catfish for only 10.99. And did you hear? Soft shelled crabs are back at New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. Life is full of unexpected events, which can come with unplanned expenses. Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union has a variety of personal loan products to meet your needs. Whether it's treating yourself to something new, paying off an unexpected expense, or consolidating debt, we are here to help. With rates as low as 8.5% APR, a personal loan with Jefferson Financial can help. Don't let life's curveball impact your financial happiness. Apply today at jeffersonfinancial.org. Membership restrictions apply. Federally insured by NCUA. Martin Wine and Spirits is home to a selection of hand-picked barrel select bourbon, whiskeys, and much, much more. They are family owned and operated since 1946 and specialize in wine, spirits, gourmet food, gift baskets, catering, and tasting events. They have many locations, so they're never too far away. You can check them out in Metairie, New Orleans, Mandeville, and Baton Rouge, or if it's more convenient, you can always shop online. Whether you're a wine novice or a seasoned collector, You'll enjoy the Martin Wine and Spirit experience. Joined now by a former fan favorite, and I would say he is still a fan favorite with Saints Nation, Teron Armstead, former left tackle that is now with the Miami Dolphins. Man, how are you doing? What have you been up to as you guys get ready for training camp? I've been great. I've been great. Yeah, I've just been, just been training. Um, you know, putting my, putting my best foot forward, getting ready for this 11th NFL season. Oh, you're an old guy now. <laughs> Hold on, slow down now. <laughs> I'm experienced. I'm experienced. I'm not old yet. Yeah, and I wouldn't. I would definitely not say former fan favorite. I think if anything, yeah, they miss still. you more now than ever. So a little <laughs> time and distance. I think that appreciation's even even went up a little bit. <laughs> hey, that 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 love and that it's mutual. It's mutual for sure. Well, look, what is your mindset going into this week? Like, I got my kids at home who like have a countdown calendar and they're dreading when they go back to school. I got Nick over here every time I come to work that he can't believe we have to wait another week for training camp to start. Are you? Are you where, where are you in the first day of school? Like, are you chomping at the bit to get back on the field, or 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 you know, it's a long, it's a long season and it's a long training camp. It is. It is for sure. I'm excited. I'm excited. I, I think we're going to be really good. Um, excited to get to work with the with the team and, and start our, our journey, building this, this 23 outlook. 
Um, I'm not rushing it at all. You know, I, I definitely enjoy the off season. Uh, spend more time with the family. Um, so when it when it's time to go, I'll be ready to go. But I'm not we, rushing it. We talk about your health all the time. Obviously, I know you had to fight through an early season injury. 13 games. So where are you, you know, how are you feeling uh, uh, right now? Feel young, man. Yeah, that's good. I feel young, like yeah. Seriously, I um, this has been a productive off season. I didn't have surgery, so I tore my I tore my foot week one. Uh, you know, potentially season in the injury, played with it. Like you said, played the thirteen games. Didn't still decided not to get the surgery in the off season because it's like a ten month recovery, whatever. But um. Just training and, and working, rehab, recovery. I feel I feel great. I feel 25 again right now. I love to hear it, man. I love to hear it. And, uh, well, tell us a little about the team. We we sit here three times a week talking about our expectations for the Saints. Are they a playoff team? Over, under, win total. Uh, it's got to be playoff expectations in Miami, even though you might be in the toughest division in the league. Yeah. Yeah, no, the division definitely makes it, makes it tough, but it, it also brings out the best in us, so we got to be on top of it from the go. Uh, can't fall behind, you know what I mean? So I think that'll help us get off to a fast start like we did last year. Uh, it's just being able to sustain that success we had early last year. We were young and experienced in, in our offense. Um, but we hit a wall and we started to get challenged and we didn't respond too well. Um, I think we will be a lot better this year, just having another year in this system, being more familiar, quarterback being more familiar, the guys up front, getting more cohesiveness and, and chemistry with each other. Um, then you bring in Vic Fangio on the defensive side. You bring in Jalen Ramsey, um, David Long, you know what I mean? So the, those additions, you can only you can only improve. It's kind of hard to expect anything less. Saints kind of had a wall last year, too. They found adversity, probably didn't respond the way they wanted. What does the team learn from that when you go through that experience? And maybe it doesn't quite go the right way. Like, how do you manifest it so it's something positive moving forward? Uh, I think the best thing Sean Payton did as a head coach was he, he treated each game as an individual, you know, and he never let one roll over to the to the next. And I think it's extremely important in this league because every game is, is tough. Like every team, it don't matter the record or the outlook of the team that can beat you. So um, it was rare that we had losing streaks in New Orleans because we, we treated every game as its own. We had some for sure, you know, some challenges, but um, – I think Sean did a great job of treating every game, like pouring everything into every game preparation and intent going into a game. So it's it's really that, you know, leading on your leaders and your your best players got to play play their best. And just what's it been like for you transitioning to Miami and a new atmosphere, new coaches when everything was kind of one way for the the first decade of your career? Yeah, uh, man, they they made my transition seamless, man. They did. It was I, I, I'm blessed for sure. I couldn't have asked for a better situation. Um, they embraced me. They were excited for me to to come down. Uh, I was a captain, you know, team captain first year. Um, so they they embraced me, man. They made they made me feel at home early. So I was de definitely thankful for that. That was a big mental juggle going through the free free agency process because uh, I had stability and consistency for so long so it was that was the only unknown and you mentioned sean he was a fiery personality da to us is like the just the levelest person in the world but we hear from <laughs> players that he's a little bit different like behind the scenes did you ever see anything in practice of like da getting fiery or, or anything like that for sure for sure da is competitive man da is, is wildly competitive and he's a uh, He's a calm demeanor, but no, he 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 gets into me and DA and got into it over <laughs> the competition period. For sure. For sure. No, he 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 got that. He got that in him for sure. That's not necessarily his approach, but it can easily, easily come out. He's a he's definitely a fiery, fiery guy. Turn hold up now, hold up now. You gotta tell us yeah, the story. Yeah, we gotta hear that. <laughs> what was the story about you guys getting into it? Not more so just quick little little shots and jabs at each other. They can't stop us. Your defense can't stop us. <laughs> hey, what do you what do you mean? That would have been a sack or something like that. You know what I mean? So just kind of just going back. Probably me and Ryan Nielsen more than anybody All right. would would get into it. But no, me and Theater had some jabs. Yeah, that sounds like Demario <laughs> Davis almost in practice. Cause I remember you guys would go at it back and forth through <laughs> training camp. Oh no, for sure. For sure. See, Demario don't 
he used to talk to Drew. He used to talk. He used to talk to us to Drew. He didn't really talk too much about the offense as a whole. But Craig and Demario would keep tallies on their wins, and we would do the same thing. But they were so biased yeah. on what's a win. <laughs> it would. It would. It would get me angry. And then I started yelling at their coach. But what we're we're talking about guys talking trash. Like, what was the trash that CJ Gardner Johnson used to talk? Like, what what are the things that he was saying on the field? <laughs> He he's a he's a gnat. He's a he just knows how to get get under <laughs> people's skin. He just he don't he doesn't stop whether win lose or draw right. You could beat him on a rep and he's still telling you that you suck that, <laughs> that you're trash that you're and and it just he get he gets people to their boiling point. Like yeah. I th- I don't know if it's like. Um, that he thinks about it at all. This is him. This is how he is. And he is, uh, he's great at it. He's great at it. <laughs> Teron, before I we get in. I couldn't believe he got out the building. Yeah. yeah. Teron, before we get into a little more Dennis Allen talk, I want to try and compare, now that you've been in two different organizations, how have you seen just the way a team is run compared to how they did it in New Orleans and in Miami? And did it maybe open your eyes up to how NFL teams can operate differently? Yeah. Um, I'm, I reference Sean a lot. I learned a lot from Sean in my time and experience with him. And he always would talk about certain teams have no shot of winning a championship. And it's before they ever play football. And that's it's from the organization. So it's from the top. And uh, so I, I definitely pay attention to that. And you will see which teams are efficient and function well from an organization standpoint. Those are the playoff teams and the championship teams time and time again. Um, so our front office and our our guys up top in my in Miami have been stellar. They've been great. Um, so the the way the organization has ran, it has been, like I say, it's been a, it's been a machine. It's, it felt like a lot of similarities to to New Orleans. Um, they pay attention and take care of the guys. They want the best talent in the building. Uh, we're trying to putting their best foot forward to to win championships. And I, you look across the league, some teams just don't feel like that's the approach. Mm. I want to take you back to when I interviewed you. Actually, you were the first person that I interviewed as soon as Dennis Allen got the uh, head oh, wow. coaching job replacing Sean Payton. <clears throat> you were one of the first guys that I really had heard from that was bought in on DA. While a lot of people and a yeah. lot of fans and just – NFL as a whole, looking at it nationally, they weren't sure that Dennis Allen was the right fit. They almost saw it as, well, this is the easy hire. But for you and some of the other guys on the team, you guys bought in to him from day one. Why was that? I saw I saw enough. I saw enough. I had been around DA for, for some years. I saw his competitiveness. I saw his his genius. Uh, we had a great defense under, under DA. We had a great defense. Those guys played hard for him. A lot of times you can gauge a coach on the effort of his players, win, lose, or draw. So, like, you, you're getting up, you got a blowout going on or a game that you're losing badly, but his players are playing like their hair's on fire. They don't want to let this man down, you know what I mean? So, um, you get coaches like that that people really want to play for, they want to succeed for. You see Dan Campbell in Detroit, even when they weren't, wasn't having good records, they competed every game. It's only a matter of time before that turns around and you start to equate to wins. You know, you start getting the right talent in the building, but that effort, that intent, and then that desire to not let your coach down, that that's the um that speaks to me that you you have a really good, really good coach. Yeah, and I think that's translated. We've all seen that in the locker room, depend especially with last year and how it went. The guys were still bought into DA. I want to go back also to that conversation I had with, had with you after DA got hired. You had actually opened the door a little bit to how the play calling was handled in the last few years. You talked a little bit about how sometimes Sean Payton and Pete Carmichael would interchange every quarter when it came to play calling. So for people who still don't think that Pete Carmichael has the right stuff to be the play caller, how would you describe what he did when you were here that would make you think that he can have success this season? Yeah, Pete, Pete, Pete is definitely uh, capable, you know, at a, at a high level as a play caller. He has experience as a play caller. Uh, it, it has been times where Sean had, get, had given him the keys as a play caller, and Sean would probably take back over in certain games, or if Sean just felt like he wanted to, to do it again, he would, just, he would just do it. But Pete has called 
several plays and in, in games uh, during my time in New Orleans. So he's he's more than capable. It, it, Tron, just playing with with Drew and the consistency that he had, like as a blocker, how does that benefit you when you know he's going to take every drop the same way, or the quarterback's just yeah. going to be I- extremely consistent in what in what he does? Yeah, for sure, man. That's that's the biggest benefit you can have as an offensive lineman. Uh, that's a tough job. You know what I mean? You're going backwards. You're trying to stop these freak athletes. And to not know where your quarterback is or where you're trying to protect is that makes it extremely challenging. Um, so Drew consistency, his his detail, the, his efficiency in operation, um, he, he was amazing. He's incredible. First battle Hall of Famer. That's my GOAT. <laughs> All the great things. Like I can't, I can't be. Uh, I can't say enough good things about the man. He was he was amazing, and he helped all us as players and perfecting our crafts as, as professionals. And when a quarterback doesn't do that, and you can't take those details for granted, how how does that change what you're doing? Are you kind of like having to be aware of where he's at and maybe paying attention to more than just a guy in front of you? Yeah, yeah, no, you have to start to dive into those details. Uh, which plays is is making him get deeper? You know, some seven step drops, some longer developing plays. Uh you might have to take a different angle and an approach into to blocking this guy, depending on these these certain plays. You know, play action is he after his sale, is he lining if he's setting up at 10 yards or is he climbing up to seven? Like you need to know all these things if you're playing with a guy that that moves around a lot on that on his spot. Cause it changes it changes your um your spot. It changes your like point of interjection between you and the defense alignment. And do you still work out with any of the Saints offense alignment? Are they a, the O line masterminds at all with you? And if so, like, yeah. like what are you seeing from some of these guys? Yeah, um, I mean, I seen I seen them guys hang out with them guys all the time. Caesar Ruiz is at my house every other day. He's okay. my little brother. Uh, Eric McCoy and Ethan Greenwich. I know Ethan is with the Falcons now, but Eric McCoy and Ethan Greenwich came over two days ago. Uh, with towels, goggles, and a soccer ball, asking, "Can I get in the pool?" So it just popped up. <laughs> <laughs> and after about five cannonballs, I got to refill my pool. <laughs> knocked all the water out. On, uh, so no, I'm, I'm my, I'm my God, I see Throckmorton quite a bit. Uh, young Lashley, I have, I have worked with him a couple, a couple days. Uh, the Saints, the Saints, heavily represented down here in, in Dallas right now. Let me let me get a couple scouting reports. I, I wanted to ask you something about Ryan Ramchuk. You, you mentioned Caesar. Talk about <clears throat> people sort of under fire in New Orleans and and you know that especially coming off the injury. Um seems like he got it last year and started to lock yeah. in. And then of course he has to go through the surgery, which is so tough for a player development. What what are your thoughts on how special he can still be? He's special. He's special, man. He's a he's a brick house. He's strong. He's smart. He's athletic, crazy athletic. Um, people don't understand the 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 challenges in the, the development and progression of a position change. Like my guy was a center his whole life, and it's it's kind of rare that somebody plays center their whole life. Yeah. You know, we usually go from tackle to you know somewhere maybe D line or something. So uh, that's what he did for for so long. So to make that transition in the in the toughest league in the in the world is is hard to do, and he's made it. And um, he's here now. Like Caesar's here. He's he's about to establish himself as one of the top guards in the league. I, I fully believe that he puts the work in. His intent is right. His will to be great is is there. Um, I'm excited to see him play. And the more experience he gets, the better he's going to get. He's 24, yeah, 23, 24 years old. You know, so um, his 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 uh, his 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 ceiling is is. Enormous. Well, I got, I, hold up. I got to act like a reporter right now. Is, is he looking healthy? <laughs> you know, you know me, Nick. We've been doing this for a long time. I never speak. Never you know speak me too. I got to try. Like I got to try. Yeah. Yeah. No, you got to, you got to try. Uh, C's look great. He look, he looks great. Um, we got some field work in yesterday after our workouts with Duke. Uh, he looks great. And they do say, I, I will say, just so you, you're not afraid, you're saying something you're not supposed to. They believe Cesar Ruiz is going to be ready to go at the start of training camp. Would you agree with that sentiment from the Saints, having seen him? I'm not being. I'm not being so, <laughs> so I can't. I cannot say that. Right. 
he look he looks great. I don't I don't know though. They might they might want to slow roll well him coming off such okay. a significant injury and start him off on a progression, or uh, he might jump he might jump right in. Uh, I know he's excited about it. He, he's he's ready ready to get get back into it after after doing those pool workouts in Tehran's pool. <laughs> 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 he didn't get in the pool. That was Eric. Eric and Ethan. Um, well, to Nick's point, I, I, he also. Uh, I'm doing the math. I think he's had five different starting quarterbacks that he's played with in just the last two years alone. Not even counting Drew. Six, if you count Drew in in his career, um, which makes things tough, and and it also so, probably makes it tough to evaluate Ryan Ramchek. I mean, he's not making all pro teams anymore because. <laughs> The offensive linemen sort of get judged by how 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 the quarterback is running the offense, but but yeah, I really want yeah. your insight on what makes what makes Ryan so special. You know, I'm a huge Ryan Ramsey yeah. fan. Been that way for since he, since he he got in the building. Huge Ryan Ramsey fan. He's he's the he's the definition of consistency. He's the definition of a professional. Um, he's on time. He's on task. He's on target. Uh, he he doesn't. He's not going to do many things that you'd be like, wow, replay that, run that back. He just eliminates guys. And and that's our job. That's our job is to keep our guy off the ball carrier. And um, he does that at a very high level, day in and day out, game in and game out. I'm a huge Ryan Ramchick fan. And and one more scouting report question. What, what do you know about Mark Evans? The Saints went back to the Arkansas Pine Bluff well <laughs> this year. Back to the talent rookie. pool, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Straight out of O line, you, uh, young Mark. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm excited to see Mark, man. I'm excited to see him play. Uh, I know he's a really good athlete. He's strong. He's physical. He's tough. Um, you know that that learning curve of technique and all those good things. It it is a curve. It's a curve for everybody. You know, some guys from from certain programs might have less of a learning curve of office line play and and others have, you know, more, more of a vast learning curve. And uh, I'm not exactly sure where he's yeah. at with, with his right now, but uh, I believe his, his intent and his desire to be um, a starter in this league is what's going to drive him. Uh, can never have a mindset of make the team or uh, if I can just get on the practice squad that you won't, you're not going to, yeah. you're not going to last, you know, got to come in and try to take somebody's job that's that's always was that always was my approach that was my drive that was my hunger um i was pissed it took me so long to get in the store mm-hmm. pissed and and i practiced that way I, I, I approached it that way so uh mark gotta have that same drive that same outlook he's trying to take eric sees or pete spot playing something uh flip me over to the other side of the ball now i I don't know why receivers and cornerbacks get all the the attention for the rivalries. I mean, it's got to be uh, the same way with the guy that you're hitting seventy times a game. Um, like, do, do you have a, a Marshawn Mike Evans relationship with anyone in the league, or or who's your favorite guy to go against? Just because you know, you know, it's it's a test, and and you've faced him a few times. I'm not about to give any of them guys. No <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the right. <laughs> no. Nah, um, Listen, every week is somebody, you know, every week I got somebody over here that this is what they do for a living. They get to the quarterback. So uh, it's so many names and and really, really good. Some great um, defensive ends in the, in the game. So it's nobody that I, that I just have a rivalry against or um, anything like that. So I can't, I can't necessarily say, I think, like just from off the top of my head, Robert Quinn is a guy that I've seen a lot, and he has the most sacks on me in my career. Um, I think it's two, or or may may might be three, but I think it's two. <laughs> but he got a few hits on me, so he's the guy that's the guy that passed me the most. I probably played him like six times. Um, but it's so many, it's so many guys. Trey Trey Henderson, my game with Trey was was a battle. <laughs> it was a battle. He he definitely uh he remembers some things I said to him back when he was <laughs> in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. Beating up on him a little bit, uh trying to groom him. He he remembers some of the things I said to him. <laughs> I used to talk back to Trey. And he was coming, he was coming with it, dog. He was coming with it. For real. That was a that was a good one. That was a fun one. Um 
But yeah, no, every 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 week, Von Miller's in my division. He's incredible. He's incredible. He's one of the best players to ever touch the field. Just everything that he can do, his power, his speed, his feel for the game, elusiveness, IQ, instincts, he's incredible. You know, so um it's a lot of guys. It's a lot of guys. And then my my big brother Cam J. We know what he do. He plays the run better than any other defensive end in the league. And he's as productive as a pass rusher. And he's a he's a first battle Hall of Famer. He's a great, you know. Uh so it's a lot, you know. We can go through a lot of different guys. Yeah, that was a perfect transition to our money segment presented by Jefferson Financial Credit Federal Credit Union. What makes Cam just so tough for offensive lines? Uh, his his combination of size, speed, and and then he's a technician. Uh, you know, you get somebody that, like, as I'm breaking down pass rushers for the week, I look at, first thing I'm looking at is can they power me? Can they pull me to the quarterback? Do they have that type of power? And if they don't, then I can build a plan of of a more finesse and hands game, and you know, I'm I'm more so focused on not losing hands and, and, and edges. Um, but the guys that can power you to the quarterback, you have to stop that first because that's what you're going to get. So Cam to be able to have that power to drive you to the quarterback, but then he has the moves in the hand to beat you on the edge too. Once you sit down too much on 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 that, makes him every every play, every play you really just, you don't know what you're going to get. So that's that's the... When you get into those few guys, those are the ultimate rushers. The Miles Garrett's, Von Miller's, Cam Jordan's. Those are the few guys that have that combo that you just really don't know what you're going to get. you got to be reactive to everything. You mentioned Trey Hendrickson was a little bit of a talker. I imagine if you mic'd up Cam Jordan for a game, what would that sound like to you, having played with him? <laughs> See, Cam, <laughs> he... he 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 tries talk, but he really like Cam's a nice dude. Right. right. He's a nice he's a nice guy. He say more stuff like after the game or to the media. It got to be somebody that he don't like. Okay. If he don't like somebody on the O line, he's gonna try to kill him. He gonna talk crazy to him the whole game. <laughs> but if it's somebody that he respects, Cam not talking. He's not talking crazy. He's just energy. He's having fun. And then after the game, he'll call O line and speed bump, whatever. But Cam is he. It's almost like the Philip Rivers a, when you see videos of him. It's like the you almost laugh because he sounds like such a dad. I feel like that would be Cam. He sounds like he's making the dad no. jokes on the field. <laughs> Seriously, that's him. That's him. You you mentioned Trey. He's kind of having a front row seat to it. I I think one of the things for us, like outside looking in, is kind of like how did this guy get out of here? How did it, how did they not recognize it? Was he just someone that took a while to to develop? Did he need some of that tough love from you guys to kind of become who he is now? Like, what, what was kind of that process? Yeah, so he, he Trey Trey came in ready to play. Like he could he could play for sure. Uh, he was he was a bit of a one trick pony uh, as far as his rush plans, but um, just just kind of you could you could beat up on him some. You can you can get physical with him. Uh, and and so I would I would use that as I as I was was blocking him, but he's he works. He is a workhorse. He is a workhorse. His his effort, his energy, and his motor is second to none. So uh, he got so much stronger, bro. This dude is <laughs> like Trey is strong, dog. <laughs> Trey Trey's a dog. Trey's one of the best defensive ends in the league. Like no question, no question about. It. He's a tough day. So uh, that's one of the things he said to me. <laughs> I'm stronger now, Jerron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're not lying, dog. Wait, <laughs> yeah. Nick, Nick, you got to tell Teron how you characterize this guy. Oh, he's just, he, he always out on like, the, that's an Alvin thing. He's called him the guy that wore the silver chains. Like, you see a dude wearing silver chains, like, they're, they're, there's a little no, dude with them. silver chains, yeah. man. <laughs> No, for real. I agree. <laughs> it's silver chains, for real. No gloves, no tape. This dude was crazy. This dude was crazy. All right, it just what kind of went into your decision to leave here? I know it took you a little bit of time to kind of come to that 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 process and figure out where you were going. Just can you can you walk us through like your process as you were deciding where you were going to play next? Yeah. Um, 
man, we started getting calls early, like as soon as free agency opened. We we got we got calls from I probably talked to like eight teams, eight or nine teams total. Uh Saints were one of them. We were monitoring the situation with Deshaun. Um, you know, trying to talk to them, engage, you know, what was going on. Uh, I had spoke to DA some weeks before and DA wanted me back. You know, he, he told me he wanted me back. We got to try to figure out if we can, we can make it work. Um, but as I was going through the process and Miami started to, to, to show his, show his face, it started to happen fast, bro. It started to happen real fast. Uh, Frank Smith was my first assistant O-line coach in New Orleans when I, when I got there. So my first two years, I want to say, and, uh, he's the office coordinator for us in Miami. Always been, we've always had a great relationship throughout the entire, my entire career. I, I really credit him for a lot of my success, my early development technique. Um, so that, that process started to happen real fast. And, and so they flew me down for a visit after the visit was wrapped. Mm. Like that was, that was, that was the spot to be, um, me and the Saints, we didn't have we didn't have much communication. Like we talked back and forth, but it wasn't it wasn't much communication because uh, you guys were waiting on the quarterback situation for so long, and you know I had to, you know, make a decision for for me, my family, my career. Uh, so ultimately, chose chose to go down to go down to Miami. Had the quarterback thing wrapped up sooner? Is it possible that maybe your situation plays out differently? I mean, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. We could do the hypotheticals. Sure. Uh, you That's know, what we do here. I would have, I would have, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I would, I would have loved to finish out my career as a Saint only, you know, just having a one stop shop and, and, and having a, my, my full career being, being one place down in New Orleans. I love New Orleans. I love the Saint Louis organization. Um, but it just became, I had to make the decision for me, my family, and, and what was next? Um, so it was it was like no hard feelings, no none of that. Like I root for them guys still to this day. Miami not playing for them is is who that playing against them is who that for sure. So uh, I couldn't be happier with where I am. I, I, I'm telling you, I can't be express how how much of a blessing it is being in Miami, the way the organization is, how they how they take care of me, how they embrace me. Um, and being able to lead these guys, lead these young men, the same way I brought up uh, a lot of the young guys in in New Orleans, not even just the old line. Like I, I definitely had a hand in, in bringing up a lot of players and and different different rooms, different position groups. So I'm just trying to do the same thing down in Miami. I know business is business, but you had mentioned too before you left that New Orleans has become your home, and you really created bonds with these guys that we see carry on now as you're still in Miami, you guys still hang out in the off season. How tough was this decision just emotionally on you take away, you know, financials and business being business, <clears throat> having to step away from a team that you truly loved. <clears throat> yeah, no, it was, it's definitely, it definitely was tough. That's the hardest part. That's the hardest part being with Cam for nine years. And you know what I mean? Just all, all those guys, AK, AK is a brother to me. Uh, the whole old line, Mark was still there, uh, Double D, you know, so it, it definitely was, that was the hardest part. That was the hardest part. That's really what took so long in my process. Because I could have signed up the second day of free agency. So uh, that that definitely was what took so long in, in my process, just trying to gauge and make sure I'm making the right decision. I had never had that situation before. Um I wasn't a highly recruited guy out of out of college, so I didn't go on visits like that or really, you know, have people telling me why I should come to their program. I got drafted to the Saints. I've been there for the whole time, so that was an unfamiliar space, and uh, so it was hard to make that decision, you know, knowing I wasn't going to be around them same guy. But like I said, Miami, they they made it, they made it great for me. You can't get away from these Saints too. You got Teddy Two Loves over there too in in Miami. Yeah, we <laughs> We had Teddy, we had uh, Timo. Um, yeah, so we was we was down there representing, and we all sat together in our meeting room, and it kind of just happened organically, too, and it wasn't even like a planned thing. We all sat together in the meeting room, and Coach Mike Daniel, he, he would talk to Mac about it. You're not with New Orleans no more, God. <laughs> <laughs> 
Teron, what has it been like just transitioning from Drew to now Tua? And what have you seen just from this young quarterback? And does it make you appreciate more of what Drew Brees was able to do? Uh, yeah, um, I, I see a lot of similarities in Tua that I, that I saw in Drew. And, and I'm not just saying this from a biased perspective. This is, this is just as an analyzer of the game. Um, his, his footwork, his decision-making, his accuracy, precision is the way he goes about it is, is I'm telling you, it's a lot like Drew. The things I've seen him do, manipulating defenses with his eyes, moving safeties, and then coming back to a certain spot like it was Drew, you know. So uh, I see the flashes. <laughs> I see the flashes of, of Breeze from Tua, and you know I love I love that for sure. Um, his quick release, you know, and and Drew has worked with Tua and, and has spoke to him quite a bit, you know. So it's not for nothing uh, that he's modeling and taking certain things from from drew's game drew was incredible like why, why wouldn't he for sure um and i'm excited to see Tua's growth and development and as he takes that next step to being you know consistently one of the best in the league which i feel like it's it's now it's now he's about to take that take that step now we gotta be there and and you know do our part as well um i think two is on his way Teron, I'm sure you're embracing the Miami community too, like you always did here. So please let us know if there's anything you know you want to share that you got going on there. But I also want to ask how Miami's affecting your, your music career. Does it change the sound at all? You got a new album. You, know, <laughs> you, you kept up with that. Uh, yeah, I still got I still got some music. I got some unreleased music. I haven't been able to put out as much as I wanted to, uh, but I'm working. I got some I got some stuff going on. Uh, I just did a project with a big record label, huge record label out in LA. We're working on some stuff. I'm not even gonna say too much right now. And then uh, one of their top producers, he wanna do a tape with me. So um, he's gonna come down, uh, come down to Miami. We're gonna record our own project on top of the project that we just did um, with this, this, big, this big record label. So you guys will see it. Uh, I'll make sure you're, you're the, one of the first to know <laughs> what I'm talking about when you, when you do hear it, you're like, okay, that's what he was talking about. Uh, so yeah, I'm still, still tapping to the music. I love it. You know, I love that form. Um, never forget you were there when I, when I recorded BOA. Oh my, yeah. And yeah. Awesome. that easily my biggest, biggest song, you know, easily millions of millions of streams. Um, and that was with no promo, no nothing. So we trying to create more of those organic, uh, viral moments. The team does not go harder than when that song would play. It's still on my phone. Still, play my song. It's still on my phone. I mean, I like, like who knew I was there for the, like, we, we worked out a day where he let me come yeah. into the studio and it was the day that he, he wrote, you wrote it on the plane and it was like the I first time the you made that wow. track, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Crazy, I was I was there crazy. from the beginning. Tell I'm gonna to take play a look. My song, you take man. some Turn credit for Trey up. Hendrickson. I'm gonna take some credit for. I, I think I wrote some of it. I yeah, don't remember. We, hey, I, you know what? We, we <laughs> do know Fre point. Freddie Mac is on <laughs> the playlist, so we'll be sure to pass the message along that Bank of America needs to uh, be integrated yeah. in this training camp. Come on. <laughs> no, nah, for sure. I'm gonna send him a text too. For that be all right. We'll record it and let you know. But. Perfect. Well, Teron, thank you so much for taking the time. We still see you've got the New Orleans love. I noticed the ink on your uh, forearm right there. You got the Florida Lee. Yeah. Still repping. Oh, look at the addition. Yeah. And yeah, Miami. Yeah, yeah. Okay. A little collab, you know? Yeah. Love it. Well, hey, best of luck in training camp and this year. Uh, we look forward to continuing to follow your career. And thank you so much, too, for supporting us as well. Oh, of course. I appreciate you guys. And we will be out at Saints training camp next week, and we'll see you guys next time.